We're trying to design a handheld Tesla coil. You can't argue with 334 volts. But it isn't easy. Even if it is smoking. We built a 300 volt DC power supply for it. I'm not doing any more work on this. But it's annoying. Ever again. And unreliable. Oh, what's it doing? Bing. We 3D printed and wound a coil. I've been going for about two hours now, and that's how far I've made it. <sighs> but it turned out not to be dual resonant. A rough calculation on what the resonance of this primary is, it's nowhere near that. Even though Bandan said it was. He said the frequency is about one megahertz. But this chip here doesn't go as high as that. We put it all together and tested it anyway. You see my electrical screwdriver's glowing? That's supposed to only glow when it touches the mains. Can you see that? And at 60 volts, oh, it was kind of cool. No wires, just like Nikola Tesla. But at 300 volts, it was not cool. Whoa! I think we may have blown a MOSFET there. So this is round two of testing up to 300 volts. Will any MOSFET survive? Will Uncle Dave still be alive by the end? And if he isn't, how do you explain this voiceover? Hello, mate. It's your Uncle Dave here. All the pieces are in place for another 300 volt run. Um, hopefully without an explosion this time. Gonna do a quick test at 60 volts, see what happens. On, seems correct, okay. Just gonna adjust the uh, pulse width frequency. <sighs> I think some guests have just arrived, so I might have to stop this now, which is really annoying timing. Because that was kind of wild. Wild, yeah, and way better than the last time we tested at 60. So while we wait for the guests to go, let's have a look at what I've been up to. You remember when I said, uh, I'll see you when I've got some new MOSFETs. <laughs> An exciting package has arrived. Yeah. Not a sponsor, obviously. And in fact, I apologise for sullying their Precious. good name. But in order to decrease sullying, I really would like to not explode my new MOSFETs. Um, so I'm really going back to the drawing board kind of thing, back to the original builder. I think Steve Ward built the original dual resonant solid state Tesla coil uh, back in... 2004 2005 this is a very early schematic i do remember when this was invented and uh, everyone got very excited back in the day i haven't actually ever built a tesla coil before but i have been reading about them for literally 20 years uh, which makes me feel a little bit old um possibly i am a little bit old anyway steve ward built the first one you can see there, dual resonant solid state Tesla coil one with obsessive compulsive disorder. Jokes. The unbelievable mess continues, but this is actually really interesting. See, what I've been trying to do, I, I abandoned my original um, MOSFET gate driver circuit, so I've used some proper MOSFET driver chips here. So first up, Steve used, where is one? There we go. High speed MOSFET drivers. Bit of oomph. MOSFET driver chips here. They feed into the gate drive transformer. I didn't really mention it before, but I was using this yellow and red transformer that wasn't really suitable for the high frequencies. So after reading things like this, technical bulletin on uh, ferrite core material selection, and uh, finding out which ones are most suitable for the frequencies. <sighs> this, which is a lovely new Toroid. The answer was blue. It was a blue one. I got a blue one. Why does everything I make end up looking like a bird's nest? Well, it doesn't really matter because it's working. Look, beautiful. Nice square waves going in, nice square-ish waves going out. They've got a little bit of bounce on them, as you can see, but um, I'm confident that's going to be smoothed out once they're connected up to the MOSFETs. Remember the big beefy MOSFETs that we're using to switch the 300 volts up and down in the primary coil. This one switches, then this one switches, then this one switches, then this one switches. Which should make the <laughs> lightning shoot out the top. They are tricky guys to drive. And I don't mean like a car, I mean like a gate. And I know what you're thinking, you can't drive a gate, Uncle Dave. It's got hinges, but where's the steering wheel? Wrong kind of driving. Does any of this make sense? Probably not. Apologies for that. See, there are three pins on these big guys, and I always remember it by 
Good day, sir. Gate, drain, source. The drain and the source are just the kind of gap between the voltage going in and the voltage going out, the big 300 volts you're going to get. In order to turn that tap on and off, to switch the switch, we have to send the right kind of signal into the gate. You have to give just the right amount of current to switch them on as fast as you possibly can, and then you've got to drain that current out again as fast as you possibly can, because the last thing you want to happen is for both gates in our two MOSFET setup here to close or is it open? Whichever one means they're on. To switch on at the same time, because that results in exactly what happened last time. Which, at the time, I blamed entirely on interference. I think it switched both of these on at the same time the capacitor is connected across and it's just blasted them to pieces. But actually, knowing what I know now, I think maybe 50-50 interference and um, bad design of the gate components. So everything I've been doing is fiddling around with these components that go on and around the gate of the MOSFET. Just swapping components around here, trying to get as square as possible so we get really clean turn off and turn ons. If you have a look, the top trace on the oscilloscope, my kind of cleaned up one, and the bottom one is what it looked like before I bring them together. I don't like this make sure that we don't get another explosion, basically, that we never switch on both of them at the same time. What I found doing all these experiments and trying to find out what's going on with this, um, this setup is uh, you can't really leave anything to chance. It really matters, uh, a lot of it, and if you get anything wrong then... And look at this, absolutely beautiful, beautiful gate drive signals. But I'm having tremendous fun, I would say that. This is a fun little um, puzzle. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, just took a little bit of fiddling and absolute devastation of the working environment. I think I tried pretty much everything. This is pretty bad, even by my standards. But look at this, beautiful. Beauty is rendered by the universe through disorder. When we create beauty, it is through order. But that order brings more disorder because of entropy. So are the tidiest amongst us, not also the messiest. <laughs>to mitigate the chances of there being an explosion I've got a few plans I'm going to put the mosfets more sort of permanently onto the uh, the heat sink this is just an old heat sink off uh, an old computer I had years ago I thought that would be imagine if you're like holding the handle there coils kind of coming out here that would look kind of cool wouldn't it so let's get started once I've done all that maybe we get some spark oh, no. make a little scratch this is the ASMR section of the video so crank it up to 11 sorry 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 Enjoy! Capped on tape. There we go. Shortening the leads of all the components as much as possible. Anything that transmitting interference. Protection diodes. Got no idea whether this one should be twisted or not. Da, 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 da. Da, da. Guests have gone. It's a new day. Let's try 300 volts. Actually, yeah. Three, mm, three, yeah, mm, mm, yeah, okay. Three, yeah, 300 volts. Mm -hmm. So it wants 12 volts, isn't it? Parallel, set volts, 12, on. Seems to be working. Charge up to 300 volts, will it work? Ooh! 
it's not even on and it's cracking away. I'm just going to turn the lights down a bit. Oh, that's not fair. Don't blow up the power supply. <laughs> My horrible power supply. Why? Those sparks are about that long. Just for a moment, just one moment. We had a result. And then... Denied. Schweinhund. Quite annoying, but we'll get there. And actually, this gives me an opportunity to tell you about why the coil started cracking away by itself without actually receiving its frequency injection. Ooh, this, another kind of transformer that goes on the earth wire that comes out of the bottom of the secondary coil. By detecting the resonance that the coil has, we can feed that back into the chips that are controlling it going on and off. So you get this kind of round and round, reciprocating, reverberating resonance. Oh, well, it's a long, long story. So, let's have another go. I've replaced the charging system, so now the light bulb remains in place all the time. And if I uh, turn this on, woo, see that flash? That was the charge going into the scary capacitor. And I can show you what happens when it's discharged. Here's another light bulb. And then watch the other light bulb behind when this one flashes. See that? That's the current flowing into the big capacitor. So that regulates the charging a little bit and uh, seems to make the power supply a bit more happy. Okay, power on. Woo! Something could happen at any second. So this is quite exciting. I think it might be working. I think it might be working. But it's not self-resonating yet. That's still me feeding the frequency in. Everything's in place. I mean, it's receiving the signal through the, uh, the current transformer, which is connected to the earth wire. Woo! That's the kind of thing. Switching the frequency on and off. Oh, there you go. That was easy. No, that wasn't. There we go. Okay, so that, that was self-resonating. Wow, this is exciting though. It's working. Well, it was working. I don't know why the light just came on. That can't be a good sign. It suddenly drew loads of current, so I switched off the power supply. I do not want... I, just, I can't speak properly. It's too exciting. Okay. But yes, just to be clear, that was not running on the frequency I was injecting. I switched that off and it was sensing its own feedback and it was resonating with the, with the circuitry. And it was loud. Yeah, we may have blown a MOSFET. I'm gonna call it done. I'm gonna call that done. We've shown that we can make a Tesla coil and that it can run in a feedback mode by itself. In the next video, we've got to dial it in, make it more powerful, CAD design a nice enclosure for it so we can make it look cool and space age, just like it is. Well, Yes, this poor little MOSFET will be joining its buddies in the big pile of burned out MOSFETs in the sky. Actually, 
just over here. Excellent.